Hey guys, Will Terry here, and welcome to my new video series, How to Make a Card Game, The Wicked Christmas. And um, if you haven't watched my last video, I wrapped up the whole Pickleball Paul book series and kind of gave you uh, an update on that series, but this is my new project, and I'm so excited to be able to unveil it. And I'm going to be making a new video series, a new playlist called uh, How to Make a Card Game. And this is Wicked Christmas. And yeah, I'm just going to introduce the game over the next um, series of videos. My plans for it up until the launch of this game on Kickstarter. And I'm going to just basically go through everything on like how I created the game to the marketing side, sharing you all my expenses and figures um, thus far, and just kind of bringing you along on this journey to see what it's like to make a card game. I've never done this before. I've never made a card game before. I've never made any game before. I've worked on several games for Hasbro, but I've only done the artwork. I haven't done the game part. So in this video, I want to talk about um, where the idea came from, um, talk about the game mechanics a little bit, and show you some of the artwork for the game. And that's what we're going to get into. So let's do it. Okay, so those of you who've been following me for a while know that I did the Inktober Challenge three or four years ago, and I did these Halloween characters right here. Um, and this this was basically a series, and I was thinking about making a card game back then, but I didn't know what kind of game I wanted to make, so I thought I'll just do these fun Halloween characters and see if something comes to mind. And what happened was I ran out of Halloween characters. I mean, I went through, you know, Werewolf and Pirate and Owl and um, Frankenstein and even a clown and stuff. And um, and when I got to the end of that, there wasn't 30 for uh, Inktober. So then I came up with doing these, these uh, Christmas characters. And so I have Mrs. Claus and... And I, I wanted them all to be kind of in that same Halloween vein. Well, when I started doing these, I was like, this is perfect because it's a twist on Christmas. Everybody's angry. Everybody's upset. But I had to answer that question, why and what kind of card game would I make? Um, and so from there, I just kind of shelved the game for a while, thought about it, brought it out every now and then. Um, thinking about what I could do and it took a few years and then finally um, our family had been playing a couple of different card games and I was thinking hmm everybody kind of gets frustrated with Christmas right like we love Christmas most people love the holidays but the commercialism you know I forgot to get so-and-so a present I forgot to get so-and-so a present it's costing me a lot of money it's frustrating we're running around there's no time to do everything and it's such a, a chore to try to find the time to get everything done. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe the, the, um, the characters in the North pole feel the same way. It's gotta be really hustle and bustle for them to get, you know, in the, in the fantasy of, of, of Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus and the elves and everything. Maybe they get feeling the same way and maybe there's legs there. Maybe there's a game there where those characters for a day, are all pissed off and just kind of over it with with Christmas. And so I thought instead of instead of them being happy to make all these presents every year, maybe they're just tired of it and they're they just kind of go on a rage. I think I channeled Seinfeld, the the scene where um George gets really frustrated because or I guess it was Kramer that got really frustrated um and he took it out on all the computers that were, were in his apartment. And it was the Serenity Now episode, and he just like unleashed all of his anger on the computers. And I was thinking, maybe that happens in the North Pole. So I had these characters, and then I realized like they weren't really quite right. They needed to be more specific. And so then I came up with these guys right here, and I had a more destroying presents so every single one of them you know there's a cat that's just that's ripping through a present and a polar bear that's roasting marshmallows over flaming presents and the, the I've got the 
you can see how I've redrawn some of them. I've got this, the snowman stabbing a president, and I've got the elf now who's ripping off the head of a teddy bear and so on and so forth. One little side note I, I want you to know is that Rudolph will not have a red nose because apparently the family that owns Rudolph, that's how they make their money is going after people that, that don't buy a license from them and paint a reindeer with a red nose and then they, they sue them. So my reindeer will not have a red nose. And then from there, I knew that I needed to really draw the, um, the logo. Like, you've got to have a good logo. And so I started working on the lettering. And I did all this on my iPad. And uh, I liked what I came up with, with the, with the lettering there. And then um, from there, I needed to come up with a box. And, you know, a game box. Because at the whole time you're, you're making all this artwork, really what the game is, is it's, the game's going to be made by someone else, right? Like, all I have to do is come up with the rules and the mechanics and the artwork and then the basically the printer does everything else and puts the whole thing together and puts it in a box but i have to in order to run a kickstarter i have to get ready for that so i start with the i started with a um a stock image that i bought of a basically this blank table and and lights in the background and let's see the i bought this box the, sh the shadow i kind of put in behind there but I bought this box as a stock image as well from 123RF and then just started adding um, those characters and I don't know if I showed you the colored characters yet. That looks like this. So this is like all those characters fully fleshed out and colored and I did that in Photoshop. Um, and one of the messages that if you're new to my channel, uh, primarily I'm speaking to illustrators here. But, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know that one of the things I preach is if you're an artist, you have such a huge advantage in making a product and, and selling it. And the, and the reason is the artwork is one of the most expensive and hard things to come by. And so there's people all the time that, that are hitting me up. I mean, I have emails every week of somebody going, I came across your website and I saw that you do this artwork and it's per it would be perfect for this project I have. And I have people coming up with ideas for books and for stickers and for wall murals and just all kinds of stuff, games. And they want me to work on their dream. Well, but they want to pay me just, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out how little they can pay me, which is smart for them. I mean, like, why wouldn't they? I mean, like, they've got, they're going to have a limited budget and they're going to want to, try to hire me for as little as they can get and good for them. But I'm busy working on my own dreams and you should be too. Um, and there's nothing wrong with helping someone with, with their dreams. If you need the money, if you need to pay bills, um, you know, I'm, I'm finally to a place where I don't need that. I, I really, I, I have saved enough money that I can actually work on my own projects and, 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 you know, my business ideas have kind of are keeping me alive. Um, I've talked about the fact that I live in a small house that's paid off, so I don't have that kind of overhead, and I did that on purpose so that I could keep keep working on projects like this. Um, so anyway, back to the box. Um, so I just put my graphics on there, and yeah, and so just kind of worked it up like this and thought, hey, maybe some broken ornaments would look kind of cool in there. And that's that's kind of the the final square ad that I figured I would end up using um, to market on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And I'll talk about that in in a future video. Um, but that's basically the 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 idea there. And another thing to to note with um, games is that actual game mechanics cannot be copyrighted. So you can take ideas that you've seen in other games you can add your own ideas some of the ideas that we have in this game and I say we because I worked on this with my wife as well um, are completely original others are borrowed from other games and kind of put, put together and there I, I did look up like I wanted to know like I, I wanted to learn a lot about making card games and so I did a lot of reading and research online and looking at you know googling stuff and um, there are different genres of games and the game that I chose there the genre that I chose is called a shedding game 
And a shedding game is basically one of those games where the first person to go out wins. So you're trying to get rid of your cards so you can be the first one to go out and win the game. And there's a lot of games that fall under that genre of shedding games. And um, yeah, when you if you end up getting this game or if you end up playing this game um, in some way, you'll probably see notes from other games that are kind of put together. We played this a lot. We play tested it. And one of the things, I don't have them down here, but I, I bought on Amazon blank cards so that I could make certain cards and we could test out game mechanics that way. You can just draw with a Sharpie and, and you know what the cards are and you can shuffle them and everything. And they're just blank playing cards. Um, and that's a great way to, to uh, figure out your game. Um, I think it's super fun. Our family loves playing this game. We've had other people play test it and they love it. Of course, I'm going to say that I'm biased, but it really is playable again and again. And one of the things I've got to say is there are certain games that I've bought from Kickstarter. I don't want to name names, but there are there's a game that made millions and millions of dollars. It's a card game. Very popular. We bought it. We actually bought it after the Kickstarter. Kickstarter raised over $8 million. Um, and... We didn't like it. It was it was the rules were too hard to figure out. The gameplay seemed so random that it seemed pointless that you were even playing a game. It seemed more like it was meant to be a a party conversation starter or something, but it really didn't feel like it was a game. I wanted a game that people could play again and again that had different strategies where you could figure out the strategies to win that had a good balance of luck and skill. I absolutely hate games that are all luck and I don't like games that are all skill where you have to just, you have to invest a lifetime in learning it. Like, you know, um, and, and I, I think it's fun for people to have a good balance. And I also think that a good game should be simple and it should be, um, the rules should be easy to learn really quickly. And I feel like this game has all of that. So anyway, that is, the 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 video for for this one uh the next one i'm going to talk about um the prototype and getting a prototype of the game out of china so check that one out again this is going in the video series how to make a card game oh and one last thing there's a link in the description to our landing page you can check out that and i actually will be making a video just about the landing page in an upcoming video so check it out